Not only is she back on tour, she's a champion again. Yeah! The legend. Here's Shannon O'Keefe. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boardwalk Bowl here in Orlando, Florida. Emil Williams Jr. here with you. Pleased to be joined by new PWBA champion Erin McCarthy. She took care of business at the PWBA Louisville Open, so pleased to have her for the Go Bowling 10K Challenge Finals. One versus four, two versus three. As Danielle McEwen will take on Brianna Cote and Josie Barnes taking on Shannon O'Keefe. The matches are going on simultaneously. Jeff Goodger, our producer, will give us all of the ones and twos. A uh, little bit of a, of a different feel, Aaron. Uh, the, the title's not on the line. There's a nice chunk of change, however, on the line for the winner at $5,000, but slightly different, so we may expect to, to kind of see the players may be a little bit looser uh, and show maybe a, maybe a little bit more personality, as we would see, uh, as opposed to a, a standard event, per se. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of a more fun-type challenge. Uh, I was a surprise when they brought it up at the start of the year. It was announced at the Queen, so... Um, it should be pretty fast matches, too. 19, 20, 23, and 24. Here is Shannon O'Keefe. Josie Barnes got the scoring started in the first frame. Shannon, who has been the best player on tour. Here in 2018, a major champion this year already. Her second major, of course, also won in Sonoma. Uh, Josie, of course, also winning in East Hartford. So it's been a very good week, uh, or excuse me, the last uh, couple weeks for you, of course, you and Josie roommates uh, yes. in that regard. So what's that been like finally for you, obviously, getting over the hump and winning a title and then kind of sharing it with Josie at the same um, time? Honestly, I can't really describe the feeling. It was really special. I, I wasn't there for Josie's win, but I obviously watched it on TV back home uh, from the live stream and then just the fact that I could follow it up. It was pretty special, actually, to to share the moment together, so to speak. Um, I mean, all four of these players have been pretty consistent this year, and uh, Josie especially, she's always been right there, but I think this year um, she's had more breakout performances, so to speak. Jason Thomas in the pit area in the set T, giving us some up-close sights. Open frame there for Shannon, first one of the event. It already has kind of a different feel uh, and something we're not used to as, a, of course, both matches going simultaneously. So Danielle's already up. She might make this. Danielle's already done more smiling in the first couple frames than she normally produces uh, during a, a stepladder final or, or title type match. Uh, I would have to agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> Kind of a different atmosphere, too. People are starting to line up for the Pro-Am, so it's not, not quite as quiet right. as what it would be. It's a fun event. Big thanks to Go Bowling, uh, not only for their tour sponsorship, but obviously uh, and specifically with this challenge, uh, the opportunity for uh, players like yourself to, to be in the mix for uh, uh, you know a bonus, if you will, during the season. Uh, but something, uh, and I'd like to get your opinion on it, you know, I talked to Shannon, and we did a little uh, Facebook Live for Gold Bowling's Facebook page earlier today, uh, and she mentioned she was, you know, very blessed to not only be in this situation to be competing, but uh, these four players kind of get a chance to get in competition before the U.S. Women's Open starts. So, um, if you were here, would that you think that would help you in in a sense, just to kind of, you know, get a little bit more comfortable when uh, when the lights are on, if you will? Yeah, I mean, definitely, it's it's obviously a different atmosphere, but I think just the fact that you get a small tune-up in a competitive fashion, um, it's really not going to hurt you going into the U.S. Open. It can only maybe help propel you, especially if you're the winner of this. It might give you some extra motivation. I realize it's two separate events, but you can always use it to build off of piggyback. Winners of the respective semifinals will meet, and that will be on 21 and 22. And it's a, a different feel here, so 21 and 22 will also be fresh. And so uh, for all four players, so of course the two players that will win, 
they'll kind of go from you know one fresh pair to the to the other. Maybe the adjustments won't be as difficult in that sense. It could be a, a good thing or a bad thing, I suppose. It depends on if you get more comfortable throughout the match or if you prefer during the practice those 10, 15 minutes that you get to warm up. Brianna Cote was the number one seed in Fountain Valley, the number one seed in the USBC Queens. Uh, last week, I forgot what seed she was. I think she was the four. I believe so. You're right. She was the four seed. In fact, shot 248. Yeah, had a big last game. To, uh, to move into the cut number last week. So making three shows, finishing twice or uh, second twice, having a, a very good bounce back year uh, for Bree. But in your opinion, and uh, you've shared the stage with her, for example, on Team USA, uh, you know, what makes Bree uh, such a very good and great uh, competitor? She's, uh, she's always keeping the ball in play. It doesn't matter what type of pattern. Um, she's just one of those players that keeps the ball in front of her, um, normally makes most of her spares, and just doesn't get into trouble too much. Even if she's got a bad game here or there, she can typically bounce back. And I think just the resiliency and the consistency of what makes her a, a key factor out here on tour. Shannon O'Keefe, Greek church here. And uh, for really, and, and again, you have to take this event uh, when you think about it. Uh, but for her, she's had such a great season. Uh, and we'll talk about that in one second. Here's Danielle McEwen. Wash out there. So for O'Keefe, you know, I'll ask you the same question. You've had similar experiences, of course, with her. Why? Not only why is she such a great competitor, as we see Danielle miss the head pin there, the 1 2 4 10. Uh, but why is Shannon? I, I, I bet. I bet money that she makes this, by the way. So you should bet. She got count, though. <laughs> got count. Uh, why is Shannon so good? Um, kind of the same reasons as Bree. I mean, if you get on her social media page, um, she is always working on her game, uh, whether that be on the lanes, off the lanes with her working out. Um, I mean, she just puts a lot of time and effort in the game, and she's always, she's basically fearless, that bull fearless yep. uh, thing that we've been talking about all summer, or all tour, I should say. Uh, she just keeps it in play. She's consistent. She doesn't try to do anything too fancy, and she's just always right there. There's Josie Barnes, someone you're very familiar with, of course. She has gone uh, a Dutch 200 pace at this point, looking for the first double of this particular match. See both players kind of playing a little left in the match on 23 and 24. Good spare there for McEwen. Obviously, you know Josie and you know her very well. Uh, you've seen the work that she's put in yes. also, and she talked about that second win in East Hartford was kind of that validation uh, for that work. Uh, you know, what, what, does, uh, what does that title mean to her from your perspective? She told us what it means for her, but from, from a friend's perspective, what does that, what does that mean to her? Um, uh, honestly, that validation is a huge thing. You know, you win your first title, and it's like, okay, you know, I think I can be out here. It's awesome to have my first win. But as soon as you get your second one, you, you feel like you belong, so to speak. It's validation that all the hard work and effort that you put into winning the first title, it's, it's come back again. So, um, you know, for me, winning one title is awesome, but I would love to do it again just to have that, that feeling of validation, so to speak. And she puts in so much work back home, I mean, between balancing her collegiate players and her own job at Vanderbilt and then being able to do this out here for herself. Um, it's pretty impressive. Take a look at Brianna Cote, 10 back. Good camera work there from Jason Thomas. For Bree, she's made some changes. She made some brand changes, for example. Last year, towards the end of the season, uh, she had uh, made a, a, a bowling ball weight change from 15 to 14. Uh, have you made any, any changes like that in your game, and especially kind of a, a lot at one time, which is kind of what Bree did uh, in a sense. But, I mean, she's been bowling amazing this year. Absolutely. Um, I haven't made any big changes like that, but I think for Bree going from that 15 to 14, it allows her to throw it a little bit harder and actually get it around it just a smidge more, which I know is what she wanted. Um, for me, I try to make more physical changes. I'm constantly working on my swing. It's, it's never going to be straight, but um, obviously I try. Everyone's got the little quirks that they try to work sure. out along the, along the summer. I, I'll, I'll ask you, and I'll be completely honest as we watch Danielle McEwen here. Going Brooklyn there, she'll take it. And meanwhile, Brianna Cote with a nice lead. 
uh, as we see DMAC. Before I get into what I was going to say, I'll ask you about Danielle because every Team USA member that has a chance to bowl with Danielle always comment that she is the, ro the robot. I can attest to okay. that. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I'll ask you, outside of being able to repeat, which is obviously one of the, the greatest uh, items as a bowler you can have, and she is exceptional at it, but what else makes Danielle Danielle? Uh, Danielle is just... She it doesn't matter, uh, for instance, uh, we'll go back to last week. I think she was maybe right around even or minus two going into uh, the second round, which was well below the cut line. And by the end of the eight games, by the end of that 16 games, I should say, she was well within the number. She just finds a way to get it done. It doesn't matter you know, how far down she is during, during a tournament. She just always ends up near the top. And she uh, made a run that last game in the round of 12. So I think she started out with the front five or six. Maybe I thought she was going to make the step ladder. Um, she's just really good at what she does. She's she's a robot, essentially. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. <laughs> Here's Brianna Cote working on a double. She's going double, nine spare, seven spare, double. Looks a little right. Got to get on the horse. Oh, my. Came back. Yikes. Good shot there from Bree. And now Shannon O'Keefe struggling a little bit here in this match. At the early open, Greek Church in the fourth. Very good shot. She seems to be playing the lanes maybe a little different. The left lane, she seems to be further in uh, on 23 and 24. I almost wonder, we obviously had the practice for the U.S. Open earlier today, and the lanes played significantly tighter than what they appear to be doing now. So I wonder if that has any factor as to the four, maybe it's a little more difficult to go from that left to right after bowling on the practice session earlier today. O'Keefe looking for her first double. And it's been this lane. Just left the Greek church. She chopped uh, a 2-5 earlier. And now back to Kilte on a three-bagger. Looking for more. How about four? And she gets the carry. Again, the winners will move on. They will face one another on 21 and 22. Winner of the 10K Challenge, go bowling. Nice spare there from Shannon O'Keefe. Will win $5,000. The runner-up will take home $3,000. And the losers of the respective semifinals will each pocket $1,000. Again, big thank you to GoBowling.com. High flush for DMAC now on a three-backer, but uh, still in the match. But the way Bree is throwing the ball at the moment, she could be moving on. Same thing here with Josie Barnes. I've known Josie for a pretty long time at this point. We don't really recall what year, what the numbers are uh, at this moment. But just to watch her progress uh, in this situation, is it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, and you're friends with her, obviously, and you've seen it as well. And then... She was one of those players that, you know, at like 14, you just kind of knew that she was going to be someone. Absolutely. <laughs> um, we grew up, I wouldn't say I bowled, I didn't bowl junior gold until I was 16, 17, but okay. I know that she started bowling it when she was a, a preteen, essentially. So I got to see her bowl in college a lot, and you just always knew that she would be on the big stage one day. Well, I, I guarantee if, uh, if there had been a U-12 division of junior goal when she was 12 she would have been bowling at like eight she probably would have won it she, maybe she might have times. actually speaking of success both players or actually all four players really and some aspect have had collegiate success for Bree four-time player of the year at Central Missouri Josie of course uh, first as a competitor as a player for Vanderbilt helped and lead them to their first national title. Of course, now as an assistant this year, 2018, uh, she helped with their second national championship as a coach. Shannon O'Keefe, head coach at McKendry. She too won two national titles last year. Nice shot, but it's going to be Josie Barnes who will advance in that match. Danielle can only get to 224. And an open frame late here for Bree. So still a possibility. Still a possibility. Bree is going to need a double here to shut out Danielle McEwen. 
But first, let's watch the 10th frame for Shannon. That left lane has been trouble for Shannon this match. This is arguably the quickest game I've ever, I don't know. Uh, I would was, agree was with it that. Quick? I mean, it's very quick. I feel like before we could even start talking, they had already finished <laughs> frame one. After like the first three frames, I had to readjust how I wanted this to go. All right, okay, let me let me rethink. Uh I'll -oh, throw in this, that, and the other at some point. All right, so here's Cote. Tenth frame, needs a double to shut out Danielle, and that's one. Good. McEwen, max score of 224. You see Cote after the open. Strike here. Oh, should we strike him at first? First shot in the tenth. Anything less than the strike here, and McEwen will have a chance in the tenth frame, which would be more than likely something to the tune of double eight, double nine to win. But it's in the hands of Brianna Cote. So a little, we got a little drama here. We 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 we, we worked it out to the tenth frame. Dramas good for spectators and fans, not Absolutely. so much for the, the bowlers. I'll, and I'll ask you about that here in a second. Cote, strike to advance. And a 2-4. So D-Mac will have the opportunity to step up. And if you give her the spare, uh, double seven. Or double nine, excuse me. So 222. Again, max score 224 for Danielle. So she'll need a double and a nine to advance in the other match. Of course, Josie Barnes will move on and allowing Danielle to have this moment. Again, at the end of the day, 5K on the line. First one in the 10th. That is inside, and Brianna Cote and Josie Barnes will advance to the championship of the Go Bowling 10K Challenge. Nice game by Josie, 228. D-Mac opens in the 10th. I know she's not happy, uh, but she's still smiling a little bit more. Yes. It's uh, it's it's different. It's a little different. And I apologize, folks, if I'm <laughs> like marveled at that, but I am. But I am. All right, Aaron. So we're going to go to the championship match now. Of course, these players will will roll uh, to 21 and 22. You've watched both players who will be in this match. Uh, now they'll go back on the fresh. So from the from the bowler perspective, you know, what do you what are we thinking about? What are we looking for as we head to that lane or those lanes, barring of course they had not the extended practice that they had earlier. Um, I actually think Josie might, both of these players keep the ball in front of them very well, uh, but I think Josie might be a little bit farther left than Bree. She's throwing a stronger ball, a uh, uh, Paradox Black, and then I, I'm not quite sure what ball Bree is throwing, but I know it's not one of their stronger ones, I don't believe. Uh, so I think they'll both keep it in front of them, but Josie might just be a little bit farther left, which might Give her a little bit better angle to the pocket, especially with this higher friction. Bowlers will get five minutes of practice. Uh, and so that gives us an opportunity to, to talk about your recent win uh, at the PWBA Louisville Open. Uh, you have been literally knocking on the door, I would say, <laughs> uh, for a very long time. Um, and for me, perhaps that's uh, more impressive in the sense that you always tend to perform well at major events. Uh, last year, you made the TV show here at the U.S. Women's Open in Plano, Texas. Uh, of course, went through some, some back spasms late. Yep. Uh, you've made uh, the Queen show as the top seed in 2015, ultimately finishing second. But And so describe the experience in Louisville. Was there a point ever in that event that you thought or you kind of felt something was different? You knew that, man, this is, this is my event in that sense. Um, it was obviously a little bit higher scoring. The pattern was just softer overall compared to what we – typically see out on tour and I, I had more left to right room than what I typically would have which obviously plays more into my wheelhouse but um, the thought of winning it crossed my mind a couple of times like yeah you know it would be 
great. The format is different from last season and the fact that you don't have to do the, um, the smaller group step ladders to make it onto that show. Uh, but I just tried not to think about it too much. You know, I think some of my errors in the past, I get too far ahead of myself and I want to win so badly that I, I get in my own way, so to speak. Um, I just promised myself that this season I wasn't going to do that. And I think overall I, I've been successful with my mind uh, set going into it. And the fact that I haven't bowled all of the stops so far, I was actually just talking to Rob Gottschall about it earlier. I think it's actually helped me in a sense. I'm not putting as much pressure on myself when I come out week after week and if I don't have a great week um, you know, last year I would it would hinder me I would really think about it when I got home I think I've just done a better job this year overall of not not getting too far ahead of myself and we talked a little bit about that uh, after your win uh, and, the, and the, the fact of uh, you hadn't bowled much as far as on tour you hadn't bowled every stop and because of that uh, you, you said there was a little less pressure you, you didn't feel like you just had to go in and Obviously, you want to win, but right. you're not, you know, kind of hindering yourself in, in that sense. But you're busy, and uh, you do a lot of cool things. So you're a nurse. Um, you are. You've got two jobs now as a nurse, I right? Do. Okay. Yes. Just talk a little bit about uh, what you do for the folks who may not know who are watching. Um, so back home, I work at two different hospitals. Uh, one is like a step-down critical care type unit, and I work maybe two to three shifts there a month. Um, that's where I started working as a nurse. And then I actually just recently in January got another job uh, being an ICU nurse at a different hospital. Um, the thought of going back to school has kind of crossed my mind, but I needed certain experience to get there. So I said, uh, you know, if I'm not going to do it now, then I'm never going to do it. So <laughs> I, I went ahead and went for it. I didn't know how it worked my bowling schedule, but it's actually worked out okay. The, my, my house buying is actually what's hindering right. me from coming out here every single stop and trying to be somewhat responsible with my money and whatnot. Um, it's just been kind of a whirlwind of a year between balancing everything, but uh, so far it's worked out okay. How is your house? House is coming along. Good. I, I enjoy having it, that's for sure. My dog likes it too. <laughs> <laughs> it's not confined <laughs> to one space. <laughs> And uh, I've seen some photos of, of your, your dog. Uh, is What's his or her name? Leo. Leo. Yep. It's a cool name, by the way. Uh, I had a question about, you mentioned something earlier about your own swing and how you uh, kind of tinker yep. with a little bit. You feel like it'll never be straight. And I went through something like that as back, back in my bowling days. Uh, oh, that's cool. That's my cool. man. That guy's everywhere. I know. I mean, how did he get here? I don't know. I'm just lucky that I'm friends with him. I beg right. him to come out. Um, Masters champion. I, Andrew Anderson, that was the bottle who just uh, snapped a quick selfie with uh, Aaron McCarthy. Um, back in my bowling days, I went through something like that, too. Where I, my swing got out, of, got out of form, if you will. Kind of did a figure eight-ish type thing. And uh, never quite really got it back to where I wanted it to. So, um, for you, what's that challenge been like in you know, are you, does it have to be the way you, you know, way it used to be, if that makes sense? Or are you, you know, you want to get it to a certain spot and you feel like as long as you can repeat shots, you're okay? Um, you know, it's kind of weird slash frustrating. I watch all these really good women and, uh, you know, men bowlers out here. For instance, like Josie, Brianna, um, Diana, they all have really straight swings. And it kind of frustrates me that I can't get to that point. But then I kind of have to take a step back and realize that's, that's not my game. That will never be my game. So I've always had a little issue with my swing going behind my back. Um, and I tried to correct it, I think, a year and a half ago, two years, and it actually became the opposite of what I was trying to do. So I said, you know, forget it, and I just kind of went back to the basics, and I, I do what I do, and I just try to not necessarily focus on it as much. Um, if it feels good and it, it, I'm bowling okay and I'm consistent with it, then I'll just I have to learn how to take it. Okay. All right, Josie is the number two seed overall. And by the way, these four players earned their spots here uh, by being in the top four in the, on the PWA points list, the first six standard events only. So the first six standard events, no majors were included in this. First six standard events only. Josie was the number two seed, of course, if you're just joining us. She defeated, or excuse me, Josie was the number three seed. She defeated Shannon O'Keefe, who was the number two seed. Brianna Cote was the number four seed. And she defeated top seed Danielle McHugh. So Josie off and running here in the championship. 5K on the line with a strike. And 
Neil Williams Jr. with Aaron McCarthy, 2018 PWBA Louisville Open champion. I know that still still doesn't hit you probably sounds right. Sounds weird. <laughs> yeah, just sounds weird. Here's Cote, first shot. It's the 10 out. Seven goes late as well. I think uh, for Bree, it's, it's kind of, you know, another situation where she's uh, has an opportunity to, to be a winner in yes. that sense. But if you're her, uh, and, and in a way you've kind of been where, where she is, uh, although she has a title, Won it uh, in Lexington in 2016, but uh, already made uh, three TV finals, three step ladders this week, or excuse me, this season. Uh, and I, I got to imagine that, although there's no title on the line, but winning this would be would, would, would feel like something that gets you over the hump, if you will. Definitely, I think if she um, wins today, it, it might be just the boost that she's looking for to get that next PWA title, um, especially with the break. Coming up, and after the U.S. Open, we don't have uh, another tour stop until the beginning of August. Besides the Lucy, that's uh, at the end of July, but um, she might be able to come back after that break and really um, get her next win. Six ten, taken care of by Brianna Cote. Again, our coverage of the U.S. Women's Open will begin tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time, on Extra Frame most prestigious event would you would you agree that the u.s women's open most prestigious event i would absolutely agree hands down barnes second frame nicely done so she looks pretty comfortable yes she does i would say and you know players like you, yourself josie yeah, Brianna, every player that's that we've had here so far uh, in, in the Go Bowling Challenge, I, I feel like it doesn't take players like yourself that, that long to get comfortable. Now, obviously, there's some challenges, and depending on what's happening on the lanes, it may look like, you know, if you're if you're not lined up, and everyone can look like that from time to time, but it seems like players at this level, it doesn't take too long to really kind of hone in on what you're trying to do and then execute it. Yeah, I mean, as long as you can find the, a proper line to the pocket, you know, everything else physical, uh, we work on it so much when we're not on the lanes here competing that it, it just falls into place. Or you hope it falls into place, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> A little soft in there for Josie. Describe Josie's game uh, as, as we watch her, as we watch this unfold. <laughs> I know you can do it. I can. Um, Josie's actually worked a lot on her swing lately over the past year or two. I know we were at Team USA camp, I think it was two years ago. Um, she had a little bump in her swing, too, that she was trying to um, fix. I know that she worked a um, countless amount of hours trying to perfect that, and it's really showed over the past um, year, even the past couple of months. Um, you know, She keeps the ball in front of her. Everything's just very free-flowing. It doesn't look forced at all, um, and she's probably one of the best fair shooters I've ever met. We always kind of compare our number of open frames in general and number of <laughs> missed fairs, and uh, my number's always significantly higher than hers in splits and in uh, miss fairs, miss makeables. Are you guys doing like a loser or whoever has the most opens buys dinner kind of thing uh, That sometimes? wouldn't be good for me because <laughs> I would be buying dinner every single stop, I think. Nice shot there from Rihanna Cote. We mentioned Bree likes to see and kind of keep the ball in front of her a little bit, playing uh, certainly further right than Josie is uh, yes. in comparison. I think they're both, uh, Josie's a little bit firmer, but they're both fairly firm with their ball speed too. Two shots, 10 back both times for Bree. Roommate watching, Sydney Brumman, her husband Randy is here. Very early birthday, shout out for Josie. Kind of the big three zero. Yes, she is. I have to always remind her that she's older. <laughs> Shout out to her husband, Kyle Barnes. I'm sure he is watching. Fourth frame for Josie Barnes. Another good shot. And, uh, boy, just like you would expect, with two players of this caliber with uh, the word 
the winner on the line, it's uh, the, this match is pretty good. Definitely. Obviously higher scoring than the, the previous. As we get prepared for the U.S. Women's Open Week, it's, uh, well, I'd be surprised based on what I've seen earlier in the official practice session that uh, we'll see many games like what the, these two players are, are producing so far, but we certainly could have a few. Nice shot again. A double, nine spare, double for bars. Still a one-pin match here. Finished position there. The reaction. I believe that was, uh, hey, it's, it's 5K. That could, uh, that be, could nice. be an early birthday present. Be maybe a dinner for me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, what do you do? What do you, if you're or a friend, what, what do you do in that situation? Love dessert. How much do you ask for? Can I get a dollar? Oh, no. Maybe five? I need dessert and dinner. <laughs> dessert. And not from the value menu either. Well, Brianna Cote is not trying to give you that opportunity. No, she's not. <laughs> Three bagger of her own, and for Bree again, just that uh, you know, could be a, a good opportunity to begin the U.S. Women's Open week in a very good light. Uh, we've got more on the way, not on extra frame, however, but uh, bowl with the pros. That event will take place actually uh, at approximately 5 p.m. Eastern time. A lot of the fans, friends, they've been uh, patiently waiting. The check-in line was very long, so that's a great thing. We look forward to seeing the best players be with the best fans here in Orlando. Here is Cote, fifth frame. Gets the 10 out. Good. Strikes galore here in our Go Bowling Challenge match. $10,000 between four players. The winner will receive five. Runner up. We'll get three thousand and one thousand dollars piece to, of course, the losers of the semifinals. That was Shannon O'Keefe and Danielle McEwen. Ooh, the carry is there for Josie, and she remains just down by one here. Fans so far have been pretty solid. Pretty busy, I would say, during the uh, the practice session, just watching. There's know, quite a few during yeah. the practice session watching. Fan interaction. I, I would say every every event we go to, fans are fantastic here on the PWBA tour. But you know, it seems like the last couple of weeks. I mean, and, and it may be because we haven't been to certain areas of the country and cities in, in a long time. Uh, Harrisburg was fantastic. Louisville, East Hartford. I mean, just fantastic fans. I don't think I've been to a, a city that hasn't had fantastic fans yet. Uh, even last year during the U.S. Open wasn't here, but there was a PWA event. Uh, it was a packed house for the Bowl with the Pro event. Josie doubled up again. She's on a four-back. And now Cote on a four-back of her own. Really trying to maintain her lead at this point as we head to the seventh frame. Here is Brianna. Still kicking the ten. Is there a is there a name for that type of hit when uh, the, the ten kind of goes late? Not quite like a rap ten, so to speak, but it it, it kind of is. Is there a name for that type of hit? I don't have a specific name for it. Maybe I could do a survey though and get back to you by the end of the week. <laughs> Get down to the nitty gritty here. Eighth frame. Both players working on strings and strikes right now. Cote on the five in a row. Eighth frame. Wow. Pretty good. Well, she's done that several, several times throughout her young career here on tour. You see a full version. You see the ball just go just just right through the one three into the pit. Now Barnes looking to keep pace. Right now it would be 280 to 279 max scores. Josie almost got to get on the horse. 
And now a soft hit in there, similar to what she left uh, in the third frame, kind of same exact way. So right now, just the first to blink late in this match. Ten pin awaits. You don't really expect to lose when you shoot 250, 260. This match had the feel of the Sonoma Championship for yes, a while. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking about, actually. Between Shannon O'Keefe and Verity Crawley, which ended up being 268 to 266, but uh, 17 strikes between them, between those two players. Barnes makes the spare. Now she will head to the ninth frame, of course, looking to strike to you know, obviously make Bree have to still perform here late, but Cote obviously will finish first. She'll have the opportunity to shut out Josie here. Ninth frame, Barnes. Yeah. And another 10 pin there. What's happening? Um, I think on that shot, I mean both shots actually, it kind of came into the head pin a little bit later than her previous ones. And it's, um, it's just difficult to carry in those situations, especially since Bree is going a little bit more direct. So hers definitely going to the 1-3 a little bit stronger. Um, that one she might have just leaked a little bit farther right than what she intended to. All right. Barnes there, spare, looking to go. Back to back 10 pins. In fact, the only thing she has left in this game have been 10 pins. So her max at the moment, 247. Cote, of course, still looking at 280, but now a little wiggle room uh, as well to play with also. And so if she doesn't strike here, she'll still be in plenty. Plenty good shape, but a strike here would just about do. A deep breath. That's solid. Oh my. All right, out of trouble. Ten pin awaits. What are we looking at here on this shot? No. Josie pretty much had an almost identical hit on that lane, so I think they might just be breaking down a little bit, but it, in this situation, you're hesitant to move because you have complete control of the pocket, and it's such a high-scoring game. Um, so you just kind of take what you get at this point. All right, 10 pin awaits. Textbook there for Brianna. Drops the max, of course, to 259. But right now, it's a situation where if she strikes and what's that, nine out or fills 19, she strikes first, that'll be enough to shut out Josie. Depending on count, though, if she does leave something, then we could be in a different boat here. Nine spare nine, if I'm not mistaken, would be a tie if Barnes were to get up and strike out in the 10th. Coach A, 5K good. on the line, and she wraps a 10 pin. And boy, it just keeps getting better. It does. It's a great song. It keeps on getting better. And they keep, okay, sorry. I'll leave the singing to you. <laughs> I tend to dabble in that every, every now and then. We probably just lost 10 for my exploits right then and there. I guarantee we could have lost about 30 if I would have given it a go. Another good shot there from Cote. And now, simply put, 10 pin here. She makes a spare. Strike would shut out Josie Barnes. All right, first thing's done. In this situation here, you've been here, I'm sure, throughout your career, needing a strike to win a match. What, what, what are the keys for you? Uh, deep breath. 
And especially in something like this where Bree hasn't missed the pocket, I would just try to repeat the same exact shot. I wouldn't try to adjust uh, for the past couple of 10 pins. I know that's difficult to do sometimes when you leave a, a flat 10 and then you wrap a 10 and you might want to do something else. But um, I think breathing is really key before you make shots. Get that heart rate down. All right, folks, a strike. She shuts out Josie Barnes. She wins 5,009. She'll give Josie an opportunity to tie anything less. Josie could get up and win. Here it is. Pretty good. Barnes. Brianna Cote is going to win $5,000 of the Go Bowling Challenge. What a shot as we take a look at it from Cote. She wanted it. 5K is on the line, and uh, I think she certainly heeded your advice. <laughs> like she did much, of course, different. She hadn't given away the pocket, as you mentioned, and she threw the necessary shot to get things done here. Josie will finish things out. Barnes will take home $3,000 the runner-up finish. Brianna Cote, again, after uh, some close calls, a couple run-up finishes. I think uh, having 5K and a nice confidence booster will will be a good way to start the week off here in Orlando. I think it's probably exactly what she needed. All right, one more shot, and we will close things out here. I will actually move on out to uh, present a check, which I can't keep, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a touch it though, right? I, I, do. A... I think so. I may not even be doing that, actually. Oh. But I know I'll be talking about it at least. All right, final score, 248. To Josie Shoot. 233. As we wait for it, wait for it, 233. All right, 248, 233. Uh, big thanks to Aaron. Appreciate you tuning in, or excuse me, joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. And for all of the folks, of course. Uh, folks, be sure to watch the U.S. Women's Open coverage. It starts tomorrow morning, Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern. Three squads, so we've got coverage for you all day and all week. Uh, Aaron, look forward to seeing you this week, and good luck. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, thanks, Jeff. Uh, thanks, Jason. And, uh, folks, uh, we look forward to seeing you throughout the week as well. Uh, so the Go Bowling 10K Challenge. Appreciate everyone tuning in. For Aaron McCarthy, my name is Emil Williams, Jr. We'll see you in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, give uh, Brianna Cote and all of the Go Bowling Challenge finalists another round of applause, please. It is my honor, certainly, to present Brianna Cote on behalf of GoBowling.com, a nice check for $5,000. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Bree, I know obviously it wasn't uh, a title wasn't on the line, but you've had several opportunities, been to some step ladders this this year. Um, I'd have to imagine that winning this would help you certainly from a confidence perspective, and then kind of getting the U.S. Women's Open week off to a great start. Oh, definitely. Um, I just had a goal in mind bowling this. It's, it was for fun. I mean, we all wanted to win it, but again, it is on extra frame, and there's still some pressure. You still want to put on a good show, and my goal was to make. More spares than last week, and I did that, so that was awesome. <laughs> uh, that's a good point. How different was it? I mean, it, it, there wasn't a title on the line, but you could tell early on there was some there was some laughs. But obviously, as we got down to it, uh, the the emotions and the seriousness started to ramp up a little bit. So, how different was it being in this setting? Um, 
I mean, it's it's different. It's not a title. I mean, obviously, there's extra pressure when it's for a title. But I mean, we're all competitors, and we all want to win, no matter if it's for fun or for a title. So um, deep down, we all want to come out on top. All right, U.S. Women's Open starts tomorrow. Uh, you're off to a great start. Uh, now what are you looking forward to this week, and uh, how do you manage the week, which such, certainly is such a, a long week at that? Definitely. Um, looking forward to, obviously, more games. I, I like the longer formats. Um, just staying patient and really just doing what I've been doing all season. And on the downtime, you know, hanging out with my roommate and my husband and just have a good time. All right, and who would you like to thank, certainly, tonight? Obviously, Gold Bowl and John Harbuck for this great opportunity. Um, the, I, me and the four final, other three finalists, I'm sure, all very thankful for that. Um, obviously, PWA, um, gosh, Pepsi Nationwide, all of our sponsors, Storm, Turbo, apparently FX for making me look good and giving me some good stuff to throw. So um, very thankful for all all parties, PWA. I, I just so many. Like, I can't name them all. I'm so excited. <laughs> I think you did a good job. Congrats again to Brianna Cote, $5,000 winner of the Go Bowling 10K Challenge.